McDavid Can here with another question from topic 5.2. We're going to be identifying ohmic and non ohmic conductors through a consideration of VI characteristic graphs. In this question, we have a graph of two different conductors, X and Y, and we have the VI characteristic or the IV characteristic for the two conductors. On the axes below here, we're going to sketch graphs to show the variation with the potential difference in V of the resistance of the conductor X and the resistance of conductor Y. We don't need to put any axes on or labels on the vertical axis. We just want the relative shapes. So let's start with resistor or our component X, which is a little bit more straightforward than Y. We know from Ohm's law that V equals IR which means that R equals V on I. If we're looking at resistor X, that's going to be the voltage divided by the current. And what we can see from this nice straight line is that any voltage divided by the current at that point is the same ratio. So if we pick this one out here, say 5 on 1, that's 5 ohms. 5 divided by 1 is 5, 4 divided by 0.8 is 5, 3 divided by 0.6 is 5, and 2 divided by 0.4 is 5, 1 divided by 0.2 is 5. It's 5 ohms all the way across. So if I come down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's always 5 ohms for resistor X. It doesn't change, it's constant. So X would be an ohmic device. The question doesn't ask that, but it's an ohmic device. Y is a little bit different, though. Depending on the voltage, the voltage divided by the current will be different. So for resistor Y, let's start when the voltage is equal to 1. When the voltage is equal to 1, the current is 0.5 amps. 1 divided by 0 0.5 is 2 ohms. So very different. Now some students love to try and draw tangents in on the graph. Because we always draw tangents. We draw tangents in displacement time curves. We draw, draw tangents in all different kinds of places. But the thing is that Ohm's law is not that kind of relationship. This is the absolute voltage divided by the absolute current. It's not a small change in voltage over a small change in current. It's not a ratio. It's not a rate. It's not a rate of change in voltage with current. It's the absolute voltage divided by the absolute current. Which means that it's really more like the slope of that line from the origin. And if we continue out to 2 volts, is the slope of that line. 3 volts would be the slope of that line. And we can see from the shape of curve Y that those slopes are getting lower and lower and lower, but they're not approaching zero. The resistance is, is not going to reach zero or infinity because of this flat line. We'll see what it actually reaches. Let's look at component Y when the voltage is 2. So that's 2 volts divided by 0.7 amps, and that's about 3 ohms. When the voltage is 3, that's 3 volts divided by, well it's way up here, so that's 0 0.6, 0 0.64, 0 0.68, 0 0.72, 0 0.76, and so that's maybe 0.78. which works out to about uh, 3.8 ohms. Interestingly, when the voltage is 4, it looks like the functions meet. So they ought to have the same resistance, and they do. 4 divided by 0 0.8 is 5 ohms. So we know we're going to have an intersection right here at 4 volts and 5 ohms. And lastly, way out here at 5 volts, it looks like it's also about 0.8. So when the voltage is 5, 
5 volts divided by 0 0.8 uh, gives us about 6.25 ohms. So what we expect to see is we expect to see a linear increase in resistance 2, 3, about 4, 5, about 6. So since we don't need to be particularly careful about the units on our axes, we're going to draw what looks like a, a, a linear curve here. So 1, 2, 3, uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and about 6 up here. That's going to be y, and y is non-ohmic. Nom ohmic? Non ohmic. It's non ohmic because the resistance changes depending on the voltage that you apply to it and the current that it experiences. Presumably, the higher the current, the higher the temperature of the device, and thus it's a higher resistance.